I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hello there, everybody. Blessings of the Lord be upon you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Well, let me... Um, we're having a little um, technical stuff here this morning, but... Um, and so uh, pardon us for coming to you a bit late um, than never. All right, so I hope um, you will um, stick with us for a couple of minutes and um, share the broadcast. Still tell somebody that we are on, all right? Faith Movement is on live and only on Faith, uh, Facebook today because of, um, of uh, you know, like I said, some technical um, clicks here and there which sometimes you don't even have control. So bear with us for the lateness, but we are here with you, and I'm going to be here with you for a couple of minutes. And so please invite your friends, loved ones, be a blessing to somebody, and tell somebody to be a blessing, all right? Okay. Um, I am going to uh, be sharing something with you that I believe will be a blessing to you for your understanding. Because there's, uh, <clears throat> there are many things um, or many people who have um, some concerns and um, um, about this particular um, area of your Christian life and um, how you um, engage other entities when you confront or you are confronted with them. One of the things I want to I want to make it clear. I want to make it very very clear today, and um, it may be messing up with um, some, you know, religious beliefs and some of your religious understanding. And that is when you are confronted with an, a demon spirit as a believer. Listen to me very carefully, and then we're going to break this thing down. When you are confronted with a demon spirit, okay, you don't you don't have no time to leave that demon to go and fast 40 days and 40 nights or 21 days before you come and deal with that spirit. What am I saying to you? In other words, you must be prepared, okay, at all times. So the very day if you are dependent on fasting and prayer to be powerful as a Christian the very day or the minute or hour or second that you don't fast or pray you are powerless basically that is what some of the arguments is because a lot of you believe that what makes you powerful as a believer it's your prayer and fasting. Um, I am not against prayer and fasting, but I want to beg to differ on that based on understanding of Scripture. So I want you to stick with me um, in a couple of minutes here for us to look, look into this and see if this is what Jesus wanted you and me to understand that without prayer and fasting we are powerless please if you are listening to me share this broadcast be a blessing to somebody so that somebody will also hear this if that is the case then obviously you will not be able to defend or help anybody in need of a spiritual need if that is a case um i've heard you know where a scripture is used you know based on the fact that the disciples of jesus you know were confronted with a father and a son who was demon possessed and um the disciples were not able to you know heal or help that little boy 
who was demon possessed or set the boy free out of that spiritual engagement and jesus had to come and you know speak to that spirit and therefore the boy was was uh, was free and so it has become an understanding and belief that if you don't fast and you don't pray you will not be powerful let me let me let me say something here listen one of one of the 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 the, the tricks okay of the enemy that you you so are mindful of is that he will use the same thing that is you are holding to paint a different picture to you the only way you are going to be very sensitive and smart against his tricks is by this area and this personality that i'm going to introduce to you just in case you don't know who he is he is the one who will make you powerful as a believer at all times at all times at all times his name is the holy spirit his name is the spirit of god he is who you need at all times to stay powerful so it doesn't matter when and what time of the day you are confronted with any spiritual challenges whether you presented with a demon person to cast out that demon or to pray for the sick to be healed and all that the Holy Spirit is who you need at all times. And you see, he is not, please get this revelation here. He is not somebody that you pick and leave him as and when you choose. It's either with you at all times or he's not with you at all. And I want you to understand this. He's either with you at all times or he's not with you at all. You cannot pick up the Holy Spirit today as you pick fasting or a day or a month or a year or a time that you want to fast to be strong, spiritually strong. So the very day you don't fast or the very month you don't fast, it's an indication that, well, if that is your, your understanding, then you are weak. But the Holy Spirit is not or cannot be equated with your fasting for which you believe that fasting makes you strong the holy spirit is either with you or not with you now i want you to understand something here jesus emphasized and very very emphasized to the early disciples or followers who were with him that the only way they're going to be powerful or receive power to do the things that he Jesus received power to do was for them to wait for the Holy Spirit and I'll prove this to you and so if you are listening to me please 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 be mindful of this that it, it is not your fasting fasting I'm not against fasting you can fast all you want but the mindset and that belief that fasting puts you in some spiritual realm where you know your 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 antennas are so close to heaven that ever let me tell you something how about if you are told to fast by your medical doctor how the how spiritual is that just because of some medical condition you have you are to fast the beginning of every month you tell me about it how spiritual is that your doctor will not tell you you must receive the Holy Spirit and that is what Jesus says you must receive the Holy Spirit is who you need the Holy Spirit 
if you listen you you receive the Holy Spirit and he will direct you about when to fast or, or and all those things come with me to let me show you some 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 scriptures you know interestingly how the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him how is it that we and the Pharisees the religious leaders we fast huh but your disciples don't fast isn't that interesting how we and I'll, I'll come with me to Matthew I believe it Matthew the ninth chapter Matthew chapter 9 beloved inv invite your friends and loved ones somebody you got to hear this you got to hear this those of you who are put under religious bondage that you must fast and then if anybody tells you you don't have to fast run away from that person that individual himself or herself does not know the scripture it's one thing to know to read the scripture it's another thing to understand it and who gives you that understanding of God's word is the same person I'm talking about, the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Look at the 14 and the 15 verse. The disciples of John came to Jesus, and this is what they said. I quote them. Why do we, watch this carefully, why do we, and the Pharisees fast often. I mean, it, 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 you can pause there for a second to think the disciples of John, they join the religious people to fast. How religious are they themselves? No wonder the same disciples met Paul and they didn't know nothing about the Holy Spirit. The same disciples of John the Baptist did not know nothing about the Holy Spirit. So I am not surprised that they are, they are asking Jesus about this. They are, they, I'm not surprised because they, they said to Paul that we have not heard nothing about the Holy Spirit. I believe in uh, um, Acts chapter 19. And so Paul asked them, so under who were you baptized? Who we'll get there? The same disciples. I want you to pay attention to that. And so the disciples of John came to Jesus and, and says, Why do we, we disciples of John and the Pharisees, the religious leaders, fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And answer, listen to the answer Jesus gave to them. Jesus says, quote, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. Huh? And then they will fast. It was not needed. It wasn't necessary. Those of you who, are, you know, listening to people who make fasting more important than the Holy Spirit please listen you can fast thousand days in thousand days in a year and you'll be powerless I am telling you this I have that experience myself to tell you that I have cast out demon and did not even fast first of all when I was called to come and help you know to you know to help that that lady i had not i have i have not even fasted for i don't even know when when i fasted the first time 40 days for 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 my business nothing even worked nothing 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 and so they put you on this religious treadmill on monthly basis quarterly basis of the year and you jump on it and then you and you don't see nothing they will come back the same way again how many times have you heard that we need to receive the holy spirit every every beginning of every month or beginning of every quarter you ain't gonna hear that jesus says they don't need to fast 
Listen to what Jesus said even about fasting. Those of you, you know, concerned so much about fasting and all that. And then make yourself so pious, like as though you 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 are and you are fasting, you want everybody to even know you fasting. Like for what? And what does that mean? Just a religious showcase. Look at John, um, the same Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Come to Matthew the 6th chapter. Look at the 16th verse. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Look at it. Please, please share this with somebody. They must hear this. They must. It's about time. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Listen to this very carefully. Matthew chapter 6. Look at um, Matthew chapter 6. Look at uh, the 16 verse. Matthew chapter 6 verse 16. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Moreover, when you fast, okay, moreover when you fast, do not be like the hypocrite. Jesus never even mentioned the word hypocrites in anything concerning the Holy Spirit. Because fasting can be a religious exercise and not a spiritual one. Fasting can be a medical exercise, not a spiritual one. Fasting can be any other thing. So please don't make fasting as though if you don't fast, God will not hear you. Moreover, when you fast, listen to Jesus. Do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance. With a sad countenance. For they figure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting, showcasing to men. 21 days of fasting and prayer. 20, 10 days of fasting and fasting. 40 days, 70 days, 100 days. You will continue to be doing that every time and every year. And as long as until you get the, the true revelation by the Holy Spirit, you will be under that religious bondage. And you better, you, you, you rather run from that place. Not somebody who tells you fasting is not what makes you strong. For they figure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasted. And I said to you, you already have your reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting. You know, so interestingly, when you have the Holy Spirit, you don't go around telling everybody, I got the Holy Spirit. Ain't that, ain't that interesting? You, you, don't, you don't even see posts on, on the social media. Man, I got the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Spirit. But you see on the social media about fasting. Jesus says, you better not tell men. It has, see, it, if it's not a religious exercise, I don't know what it is. So that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in, in secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. This is what Jesus said concerning fasting. If you want to know what he's, he, he said concerning fasting. Don't make fasting as though that is where your authority is. As a Christian and as a believer. I'm going to show you what Jesus told the disciples, what will make them powerful. First of all, let's look at Jesus himself. Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Let's, let's look at he himself. What distinguished him from everybody? Matthew, uh, look at Matthew 3. I want to say, say something here. We will go to this here. Come to, come to uh, Matthew chapter 3. Look at Matthew chapter 3. And the 13th verse, starting from the 13th verse. Watch this now. 
This is John the Baptist baptizing everybody. And Jesus also came to be baptized. Watch this carefully. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by he, John. John tried to prevent Jesus by saying, quote, I have need to be baptized by you, and are you coming to me? End quote. This is John. But Jesus answered John and said to him, quote, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all scripture, all righteousness, that is. End quote. Then he, John, allowed, I mean, uh, yeah, John allowed Jesus to be baptized. Verse 16. Watch this carefully. Then Jesus, when he had been baptized, came, imme came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. The heavens opened, and the Spirit of the Lord, I, I'm, I'm taking you to, to, to a place now. The Spirit of the Lord descended like a dove, upon Jesus 17 and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased now watch this this picture here among everybody that was baptized by John Jesus received the Holy Spirit the Spirit of God descending upon him now look at chapter 4 verse 1 of Matthew right there then Jesus was led by who? Not by his fasting and prayer. He was led by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You think what gave Jesus the authority, the power to withstand the enemy, to, to, to withstand the devil? Let me tell you something. What is his fasting and prayer? No. I, I am I am telling you that it was the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit made all the difference in the life of Jesus. Remember, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, everybody, they all fasted. They all fasted. But they, everybody who fasted also had a problem with Jesus healing the sick, even on the Sabbath day. Jesus was the one who was raising the dead. Not the Pharisees and the, and the Sadducees, not the religious leaders. But yet they were all fasting, ain't it? You better know, you better know scripture and have an understanding of what is happening here. Have an understanding of what is happening here. So Jesus received the Holy Spirit, was led by the Holy Spirit. Get a revelation here. To be tempted by the Satan, by, by Satan. Now, look at Acts chapter one. Look at Acts chapter one, verse eight. Acts chapter one, verse eight. When Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit to the disciples, he never brought in fasting. Let me show you what he said. That will make the disciples powerful. Look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Listen to what he says. But you shall receive power. 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 Underline power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power. Not when you have fasted 40 days. 70 days. 21 days. Forget that. Boy, I feel like I, 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 I'm screaming, but I'm telling you, I, I just I, I just want to drill this thing in. But when you shall, you says, but you shall receive power. Oh, hallelujah. You shall receive power. Listen to me very carefully. Those of you who are under a religious fasting bondage. I am not against fasting. You see, as a matter of fact, fasting is your own personal spiritual exercise. I am, I am making a distinction between where you are told that 
you have to fast for heaven to hear you. As though if you don't fast, heaven don't hear you. That's a facade. It's a religious facade. If you want to know what Jesus said, he says, you receive power. Power, power, power to heal. Power to, to cast out demons. Power to... But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in, Ju in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the end of the earth. The reason why you can't even, even tell anybody about Jesus or stay or use the social media to talk about Jesus so that the, the, the end of the world, the earth, will hear you talking about Jesus is because you don't have power. You don't have the Holy Spirit power. That's what it is. You don't tell me you are shy. You are shy, but you get on the social media and watch every nonsense you see on there. You ain't shy. You are shy of Jesus because you don't have power. You don't have power. You don't have power. Jesus says you will receive power. Power, power, power. Power to be witnesses of him. That's what he says. He never mentioned no fasting over here. And so this, 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 you know, issue about, you know, this uh, guy's father, you know, came to the disciples and disciples were not able to heal uh, and that and, and because Jesus was in another. Yeah. Well, let me tell you the, the, the realm in which Jesus was. Jesus was in another realm because he had the Holy Spirit. The disciples didn't have the Holy Spirit then. The disciples did not have the Holy Spirit at that time. This is when Jesus told them, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will have power. And beloved, study the scripture. You realize where, when they received the Holy Spirit, what was happening? Peter was raising the dead. Who raised Docas when Docas died? It was Peter. It was Peter. And the same Peter and John at the gate called Beautiful. What did they, what, what happened over there? They heal the sick. They had received the Holy Spirit. It was not their fasting and prayer. As a matter of fact, they were even going in, according to scripture, they were, it was a time for prayer, so they were going in to pray. They have not even gone in to pray and then come out of the, the, pray, the prayer sanctuary with power to heal the sick. They heal the sick on their way to pray. The Holy Spirit was already in them, was active. What makes you powerful is the Holy Spirit. Forget this fasting and prayer stuff that you use to put people under bondage. Oh, Patrick, you are pumped up today. Yes, I am sick of this religious preachings and teachings that is going all over the place. And people, instead of helping people out of bondage, you keeping them people out of people in bondage for money's sake, for the sake of money. That's it. If not, go and look for a job. Because we all talk about Jesus and still have our own jobs that we do. Jesus never told anybody, stop working, stop making money, and go and, and tell it. All that you have to do is to use the gospel as a business. Sick of that. You can tune me off because after all this is not where i make my money this is not what i that that this i don't get my paycheck out of this jesus says you will receive power and then you'll be my witnesses so wherever you go you talk to people about jesus he didn't tell you to stop being a doctor he didn't tell you to stop being a shoe a shoe a manufacturer he didn't tell you to stop whatever you know how to do. Ah, uh, I tell you, I tell. Look at Matthew 17, 19. I tell you. Well, I, you know what? I might as well not come today, right? I came late. But I'm telling you, I just feel like, I mean, I, whatever it is, we're going to get this message out here. And I, I'll be back again. I'll be back. Matthew 17. 
Um, look at the 19 verse, I believe. Let's let's see something here. Matthew 17. Uh, uh, let's let's pick it up from 14. Where well, most of the the this argument and stuff. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to to uh, him kneeling down, and um, uh, uh, kneeling down to him and saying, "The Lord have mercy on my son. Uh, he's he's uh, uh, paralytic, epileptic, and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not they could not cure cure him or heal him. Then Jesus said, "Oh, faithless and." preserved generation how long shall i be with you how long shall i be a bear with you bring him here to faithless he didn't say fastless jesus did not say fastless he said faithless faith 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 faithless you didn't have faith then jesus rebuked the demon and the, and the demon came out of out of him and the child was cured from that very hour then the disciples came to Jesus, listened to him and said, the disciples came to Jesus privately there and said, why couldn't we not cast him out? So Jesus said to them, because, because of your unbelief. Jesus never said, because you haven't fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Because you didn't believe. You didn't believe that you can do this. You didn't believe that you are with the master whom you have you are, you've seen do things. You didn't believe in the authority in which I, 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 I declare things. Jesus never said to the disciples, because you have not fasted. Because you haven't prayed. He says, because of your unbelief. Unbelief. For surely I say to you, if you have faith, not if you have fasted. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to a mountain, move here and there, and it will be... And it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. However, this kind, watch this now. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Ah, so the religious people pick this one up and say, okay. So it's fast. It, it only goes by fasting and prayer. This one. This kind. This kind. Not all kinds. This kind of disease. Like your medical doctor will also tell you. Because of this kind of disease. You must fast. We are going to operate on you. But this kind of disease that we need to work on. You must fast. Don't eat nothing. Don't drink nothing. This kind. So you pick this kind of and equated to every situation no wonder every time you have to continue to do the same thing you need to read the scripture and have a clear understanding of it and the only way you're going to have that understanding is when you receive the power to understand do you know what do you know why the, why the, the religious leaders could not comprehend how jesus was, was so was so intelligent you know, in understanding even the law. Even the law. The difference is the Holy Spirit. What makes you a Christian powerful is the Holy Spirit. Listen, your boldness and authority comes by the Holy Spirit, not by fasting and prayer. Don't let any religious person deceive you without foolishness. You, you, Take the fasting and prayer alone without the Holy Spirit and see how far you can go. It is not how you start though. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Anybody can start anything. Anybody can start anything. But how you finish is what makes the difference. Uh, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Look at Acts chapter 16. I got it. Let me let me leave you here. Acts chapter 16. Look at Acts chapter 16. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at Acts chapter 16 and um, the 31st verse. This was a situation when um, um, these guys were put in jail. 
Paul and Silas by doing what? By talking about Jesus. Huh? Paul and Silas were talking about Jesus. Witnessing about Jesus. But by the infusion of the Holy Spirit, they were free talking about Jesus and all that. And they were put in jail. Look at verse 25 down here. Let me show you something. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and every, everyone's chains were closed. And the keeper of the prison, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners have left, had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice, saying, Do not do, is that do yourself no harm, for we are all here. We ain't going nowhere. Then he called for, for a light, run in. And fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. That was the 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 the, uh, um, the, uh, the the prison guard or the warden. And he brought them out and said, "Search, what must I do to be saved? I see something different about you guys." The Holy Spirit put a song in their in their hearts, and they started they started singing, praising God. Boy, I tell you, that's one of the reasons I get up in the morning. I, I there's ain't no song in my heart. It's like, uh oh, what did I, what was going on? <laughs> a new song. The Holy Spirit will give you a new song. Hallelujah. Man, I feel like I want to pump on this one. Watch this now. So he came, he came, brought them out, and said, Sir, what can I do to be saved? Well, now, now think that thing for a minute. What, what do you know about salvation? What did he know about salvation to ask them that? What must I do? Do you know do you know what he, he, he actually was asking? How can I become like you guys? That there's a power in you that you sink and the jail doors open. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Are you getting the revelation here? You sink and the jail doors open. You praise God and the jail doors open. He says, what must I do to be saved? Now listen to the response they gave him 31. So they said to, 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 to him, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. They never, Paul and Silas didn't tell this guy, do you know something? You don't know the sacrifices we have made. Do you know the hours of, of uh, hours of fasting we have fasted? You have no idea. You have no idea. Do you know the sacrifices we have done to be where we are and all that foolishness sometimes you hear uh, people talking about? You know the sacrifices we've done. I have sacrificed. You know the sacrifice. You don't want to sacrifice anything and you want to get them. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Paul and Silas told this guy, he says, believe on the Lord Jesus. Believe. 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 This is exactly what Jesus told the disciples when they came to him, that how come we couldn't heal, cast out the demon out of this little boy? Jesus says, because of your own belief. Jesus never referred them to that the fact that you people, you realize that all this week you haven't fasted. Jesus never said that all this month you haven't fasted. All these years you haven't fasted. He says, no, because of your unbelief. And that's exactly what Paul and Silas is telling this guy. He says, you believe on the, on the Lord Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus. And you shall be saved. Not only you, but you and your household. Believe on the Lord Jesus. I'm going to leave you with that one. You better believe on the Lord Jesus. And stop following and, and putting yourself under religious people. Who by the end of the day is telling you to sow a seed because if you don't sow a seed, you, God will not give you your breakthrough and all that. You see, you make them rich at the expense of your, of your ignorance. They will tell you a year by this time, 
I see you driving a Mercedes Benz. And when they are leaving your presence, they go with your money. They go rich. And you have to wait for a year by this time. Don't get me started, please, please. Don't, 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 don't. I, check, I, feel, I feel some Holy, Holy Ghost anointing just to let me expose certain things. Please. Please. Believe on the Lord Jesus. And you shall be saved. That is what Paul and Silas was telling this guy. Believe on the Lord Jesus. The Jesus who had the Holy Spirit to do exploits. And Jesus who said, you will receive power. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You receive power. And these things that you see me do, you will even do more and more and more. Because after three years, I have to leave. But you, when you receive the Holy Spirit, will be around for some time. You can do more. Beloved, the difference is the Holy Spirit. Not your fasting and prayer. Not fasting. Medical doctors will tell you fast. Fetish people tell you fast. And all that. Please. I'm not against fasting. Don't get me wrong. Some of you who don't know how to interpret stuff. I'm not. But fasting is more of your personal, your own personal exercise. But if you want to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ with authority and power, to have boldness, courage, look at Peter and John. Look at them. Look at them. Power came. Power, power, power came upon them when they received the Holy Spirit. They were, Peter was able to stand there, speak boldly. He was not afraid anymore. Because he, when Peter was afraid, running, uh, running from Jesus, telling people I don't even know him, he had not received the Holy Spirit then. He has not received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you power. The Holy Spirit gives you authority. He gives you boldness and courage. My goodness, you'll be standing there looking... Look, opening your door and looking for the devil himself is like, okay, fine. Where, where are you at? Please. I'm telling you, you better get this. Believe on the Lord Jesus and there shall, you shall be saved. Give your life to Jesus. How do you do that? Scripture tells you and I, you believe him in your heart. It is a going fast. You believe him in your heart and you confess him with your mouth. That the Lord raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. And as many as receive him, to them are given the right to become the children of God. As many. You want to be a child of God? Know that you have this and eternal life. Don't let anybody fool you with that foolishness about you know, all this is a story. It's not true that I die and all those things. Beloved, you know, just, just, Say it's not true. But when you find out later that it's true and you did not believe and receive it, we will see who's a fool then. Why don't you be a fool now? Okay? And see yourself later that, whoa, you took a right decision. But rather rather thinking that, no, this is, this is not true. And see yourself as a fool later. Give your life to Jesus. I'm going to leave you with this. You and your house shall be saved. Okay? You and your house. You believe him in your heart. You confess him with your mouth. That God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Because with your heart, one believes. And with your mouth, you make the, that declaration of your salvation. See, the, the jailer acts, or the prison, uh, prison warden guy, or the guard, acts Paul and Silas. What must I do to be saved? He asks. He asks. He asks. Receive him today. I again want to thank you for making time to listen. We'll continue. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we'll continue with this. Because there's a whole lot of people that needs to come out of that religious, you know, fanatical fasting bondage. Oh, yes, you need to. Mm -hmm. Need to come out and be free. Jesus came to set us free. 
He did not come to put us into bondage. He came to set us free. And whom the Son sets free, glory be to God. He is free and she is free indeed. Indeed. Freedom has come. And you still want to be in bondage? How about some 21 day fasting? Some 40 day fasting? Keeping you in the place where you can enjoy your ice cream and some hallelujah pie and some hallelujah ice cream. And I'm not saying don't fast. I am not saying if it's see, it's a personal thing. It's not a corporate business, it's a personal stuff. That's where my, my issue is. Don't make it a religious exercise that you have to do that just so that heaven can hear you. So the very day you cannot fast. Heaven will not hear you. Think about that. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, He comes to dwell with you. And Jesus says, He will dwell with you and be in you forever. Ever. That's what Jesus says. Forever. 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 You see, so your authority, your tenacity, your boldness, your courage, it's dependent on the Holy Spirit. Okay? Not what we just spoke about. Well, share this broadcast. Be a blessing to somebody. I believe it's been a blessing to you. Join me. Go to the um, our YouTube channel. And please subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, get this and more of today's and more messages. That will be a blessing to you. And uh, share it to your friends and loved ones. Let everyone be free in Christ Jesus Colossians chapter 2 verse 10 we are complete in him we are complete in Christ nothing missing nothing broken the days of ignorance is over and Jesus has come to set us free hallelujah and we are free indeed so please be a blessing to somebody share the broadcast and um, I see you so for those of you who are not able to catch today uh, because of some technical technical stuff, we're not able to um, go live on the other platforms. But tell everybody, I believe you can get this uh, broadcast here. All right. Well, I um, want you to know, as always, um, you don't have no trouble. <laughs> all you need is your faith in God, and in all thy getting, get understanding. I'll come your way and see you soon. Blessings of the Lord be upon you and your house. Blessings of the Lord be upon you and your house. I will see you same time. God bless you.